today we will discuss the development of eye in frog embryo so in frog eye works as the photoreceptor organ and before going to the embryogeny of the eye we will uh, just go to the various uh, structural features of uh, frog eye so uh, this eye is in the shape of a ball which is called as the eye ball and it has got a stalk which is called as the eye stalk and the eyes are located in sockets of the skull which are called as the orbits now coming to the uh, three layers of this eyeball the eyeball is actually a ball which is formed of three layers there are three uh, layers on its wall the outermost tough fibrous layer it is called as the sclera so this is the outermost tough fibrous layer of the eye and the middle layer the middle layer which is vascular uh, it is called as the choroid and the innermost layer is the retina so the outer sclera middle choroid and inner retina retina is the photosensitive layer now coming to the anterior region of the eye the exp in the exposed portion of the eye so this is the exposed portion of the eye where the sclera is transparent in the exposed portion of the eye the sclera is transparent and uh, this uh, transparent sclera at the exposed portion of the eye is called as the cornea then now the cornea is covered over by a transparent membrane which is called as conjunctiva the conjunctiva is extending between the two eyelids so here will be the upper eyelid and here will be the lower eyelid and the conjunctiva is extending between the two eyelids that is also transparent now this is the second layer which is called as the choroid so the second layer uh, with the vascular layer is called as the choroid and at the anterior region the choroid it is seen in the form of a curtain and this curtain it is called as the iris so this is a curtain remember this is a section so uh, this is actually a circular curtain a curtain with a circular outline and this is called as the iris at the center of the iris is an aperture called as the pupil so light passes through the transparent conjunctiva then the cornea and then the space and it traverses through the pupil where there is a lens where the light comes in contact with the lens so this is the eye lens and this eye lens it is held in position by suspensory ligaments the lens is held in position by the suspensory ligaments and the lens is having optical properties now coming to the retina the retina is the innermost layer and uh, the retina uh, is not complete anteriorly uh, the retina stop uh, the retina extends only up to this region and it consists of photosensitive cells nerve cells etc so light will come through all these structures that means it comes through the conjunctiva cornea it passes through the pupil it passes through the lens and reaches the retina where there are photosensitive or light sensitive cells so when the light uh, reaches these cells the cells get excited and they are connected in turn to nerve cells from the nerve cells arise nerve fibers and all the nerve fibers so throughout the retina there will be nerve cells and all the nerve cells are having nerve fibers and all these nerve fibers they will converge they will come and converge at one point this region where they leave the eye and all these nerve fibers they leave the eye as a single nerve which is called as the optic nerve so this is the converging point where all the nerve fibers of the nerve cells present in the retina will come and converge so this region is called as the blind spot where all the nerve fibers will come and converge and they pass out of the eye as the optic nerve so this is regarding a uh, general uh, view of the frog eye and uh, when here there is the lens the cavity inside the eyeball is divided into two regions this region between the cornea and the lens is called as the anterior chamber or the aqueous chamber and this chamber the larger chamber between the lens and the retina is called as the vitreous chamber so this is the structure of an adult frog eye and now we will come to uh, the development of the eye so 
uh, I as I already told you is the photoreceptor. There are uh, three sources which give rise to the tissues of the eye. First one is the wall of the diencephalon. So, we will come to the uh, structure of the brain. So, this is the anterior region, the head of the tadpole and this is the cavity of the brain, the cavity of the forebrain and this region is the diencephalon. So, this is the cavity of the diencephalon. So, uh, the wall of the diencephalon or the new rectoderm of the diencephalon will give rise to parts such as retina, part of cornea, etc. So, the wall of the diencephalon give rise to parts of the eye like retina and part of the cornea. Then the epidermal ectoderm that means the ectoderm outside, the ectoderm outside will give rise to the lens and the third is the mesenchyme tissue. So, this is the mesoderm, the mesenchyme tissue it gives rise to the sclera, choroid and also part of cornea. We will see each one of them gradually. So, the tissues of the eye develop from three sources that is one the wall of the diencephalon will give rise to the retina as well as part of the cornea. The epidermal ectoderm will give rise to the lens and uh, the mesenchyme of the head will give rise to the sclera, choroid and uh, part of cornea. Now, first of all when will eye development start? Eye development starts during the tail bud stage of the embryo. So, what is tail bud stage? Around 4 days after fertilization. When the larva is around 3 millimeter long, it will develop a bud like region. This is called as the tail bud. And um, the eye development starts during this stage. So, we will just uh, start with how eye development occurs. So, for that we will go to the simplified diagram where you can see this is the cavity of the forebrain and uh, this is the cavity of the diencephalon. This is the cavity of the diencephalon. So, from the wall, so this region is the diencephalon. So, from the wall of the, so this region is diencephalon. From the wall of the diencephalon, a pair of evaginations originate. Look, so, these are the two evaginations, they originate towards the sides. So, they are ventrolateral evaginations originating from the ventral wall of the diencephalon. And these two evaginations, they are called as the optic vesicles. So you can see these optic vesicles growing. The two evaginations from the optic vesicles, they start growing and they enclose a cavity. So, inside they enclose a cavity. This cavity is called as the optoseal which is obviously in continuation with the cavity of the diaseal. So, this is the cavity of the diaseal or the third ventricle and that is continuous with the optoseal. So, the eye development is initiated by the formation of these two optic vesicles which originate as ventrolateral evaginations from the diencephalon. Now, this basal part of the optic vesicle, so this is the basal part of the optic vesicle, here this is the basal part of the optic vesicle. The basal part of the optic vesicle is connected to the brain by a narrow optic stalk. So, this is the stalk. So, gradually during development you can see a stalk like structure developing here. This is actually formed by the mesoderm. This uh, pink uh, shaded region is the mesenchyme. So, mesenchyme is actually converging to this point. You can see convergence of the mesenchyme. So, this narrows down like a stalk and the stalk is called as the optic stalk. So, the um, basal part of the optic vesicle is connected to the brain by a narrow optic stalk which is formed by the convergence of the surrounding mesoderm. Now, uh, we will have a look at another, uh, the, this is the optic stalk, look, this is the optic stalk or in this diagram, this is the optic stalk. So, we will come back to our previous diagram. Now, what happens? You can see the optic vesicles growing. The optic vesicles grow and they come in contact with the ectoderm of the head. So, this is the outermost layer of the head which is called as the ectoderm. So, the optic vesicles are growing and they are coming in contact with the head ectoderm. Here you can see they are only starting as pouches but as they grow to, uh, towards the uh, outer surface they are coming in contact with the head ectoderm. 
Now what happens? Now the ventrolateral wall of uh, the uh, optic vesicles uh, they uh, start flattening and they start invaginating. So, so far this was like a vesicle but now you can see them invaginating the optic vesicles undergoing invagination by flattening of the ventrolateral wall. So, now it is no more a vesicle you can call it as an optic cup. Okay. So, when the vesicle becomes cup what will happen to the cavity inside the cavity is reduced. So, the invagination of the optic cup is obliterating or it is uh, reducing the cavity inside which is called as the optocele. And uh, you can see this is the uh, inner wall of the cup. So, this is the uh, these are the two walls of the cup. So, uh, this is one wall and this is the other wall and they are actually coming in proximity that I will show you through another diagram that is the this cup cup is invaginating and this is the uh, inner layer of the cup and this is the outer layer of the cup. They are coming in close proximity and what is happening to the cavity optoseal it is obliterating. So, the invagination of the cup it will reduce the uh, optoseal or the cavity inside and the inner and outer walls. So, this is the uh, outer wall of the cup and this is the inner wall of the cup they are coming in contact with each other. So, they are coming in proximity. Now, the uh, another thing we have to uh, notice is that when there is infolding of the vesicle, the infolding also extends to the ventral side of the stalk. So, this is the optic stalk. So, when there is infolding in this region also there will be an infolding. So, that will leave a double walled groove here. So, in the basal region of the optic stalk there will be a double walled groove because the invagination is also continuing to the ventral region of the stalk and there develops a double walled groove it is called as the choroid fissure that I will show you again here. This is the invagination. So, the invagination continues to this region also the invagination continues to the ventral region of the optic stalk also and this leaves a groove or a fissure look here this is a groove or a fissure this groove is called as the choroid fissure and what is the purpose of the choroid fissure the blood vessels which supply to parts of retina and other parts of the optic cup they are entering through the choroid fissure. So, the choroid fissure is actually a pathway for the passage of blood vessels supplying to the parts of the eye such as the retina and during later embryonic stages this fissure will close. So, uh, the invagination creates the cup but this invagination also extends to the uh, ventral region of the optic stalk also which will leave a groove here, a groove or a channel here, a double wall groove that is called as the choroid fissure. So, this is all what is happening with the optic cup. So, uh, the optic vesicle starts growing, it grows and reaches the head ectoderm, it starts invaginating, it develops a stalk, invagination extends also to the optic stalk where it leaves a fissure which is called as the choroid fissure. Now, we will go to what happens to the ectoderm. So, the ectoderm, this is the ectoderm, this is a whole head ectoderm. But the ectoderm which is coming in contact with the optic vesicle. So, here you can see a blue shaded region. So, this represents the ectoderm which comes in contact with the optic vesicle. It will start thickening. So, the ectoderm that comes in contact with the optic vesicle starts thickening and it forms a structure which is called as the lens placard. So, this thickening developed by the uh, head ectoderm which is coming in contact with the optic vesicle is called as the lens placard here it is uh, marked in blue color. Now, what happens the placard also starts invaginating the placard is also invaginating and later we will see what happens. So, we come back to this diagram. So, this is the optic cup which is formed from the optic vesicle this is the placard this is the placard which has invaginated 
the placard has invaginated along with the invagination of the optic cup. So, this is actually formed from the head ectoderm. It is the lens placard which is invaginating to form the lens cup and thereafter the cup will pinch off from the rest of the head ectoderm. It is pinching off here, it will pinch off, it will separate from the head ectoderm and forms a vesicle and this vesicle is called as the lens vesicle which will give rise to the lens. So, once more the this is the uh, ectoderm which is coming in contact with the optic vesicle this thickens and this thickening is called lens placard it also starts invaginating into the optic cup and forms a lens cup then it becomes a lens vesicle it bud off from the ectoderm and occupies its position inside the cup you can see this is the lens vesicle this is the lens vesicle it has actually invaginated from this head ectoderm so it is uh, this structure which gives rise to the lens and it starts getting supported by suspensory ligaments now we will come to the lens so here is your lens the lens which has pinched off from the ectoderm the lens it has got an outer wall which is formed of cuboidal epithelium the lens is having an outer wall which is made up of cuboidal epithelium and an inner wall the inner wall has got cells they start elongating to form lens fibers so the cells of the inner wall they start elongating to form lens fibers they also start div dividing mitotically uh, to add more and more lens fibers and eventually this cavity, this cavity inside the lens vesicle will soon disappear, it will get obliterated and finally this will develop into a solid lens and the cells which make up the lens will undergo differentiation to develop lens properties or optical properties. So now this turns into an optic structure by differentiation of the cells. So the actually this lens vesicle has pinched off from the invaginating lens placard and uh, this has got two layers outer layer is made up of cuboidal epithelium and inner layer of cells they elongate and divide mitotically to give rise to the lens fibers and finally this develops into the lens and uh, this gets uh, okay, uh, this uh, gets into the optic cup this is invaginating towards the direction of the optic cup and now it becomes a solid lens now we come back to the optic cup so this is the outer layer of the optic cup and this is the inner layer of the optic cup so this was the optic cup this is the outer layer of the optic cup and this is the inner layer of the optic cup at the rim so this is the rim this is the rim or the margin at the rim they are continuous and they are continuous and Mm, these, this rim finally uh, it starts become very becoming very thin and that develops into the curtain which is called as the iris remember I told you this is the iris this is the iris at the center of which is the pupil so uh, this space will develop into the pupil this space will develop into the pupil and uh, the this rim it will develop into the iris actually iris development starts from a region here which is called as the choroid node that means the region where the choroid fissure originates this region is called as the choroid node it is from the choroid node that the iris starts developing so the iris is formed in this region at the center of the iris there is a cavity called as the there is a um, opening called as the pupil actually the pupil it regulates I'll show you this is the pupil the pupil regulates the amount of uh, light entering into the eye so the amount of light entering into the eye is controlled by the pupil uh, when the uh, the pupil is surrounded by the uh, iris and uh, the um, iris uh, when it contracts the pupil will be reduced and when it relaxes the pupil will be enlarged and this will regulate the entry of light into the eye so uh, this is how uh, the light uh, entry of light is being regulated into the eye 
Now we will uh, go to the optic cup again. The optic cup it is having two walls. This is the outer wall of the optic cup. This is the outer wall of the optic cup and uh, this is the inner wall of the optic cup. The outer wall of the optic cup is called as the pigmented layer. So, this is the outer wall of the optic cup which is called as the pigmented layer and uh, this is the inner wall of the optic cup which is called as the sensory layer which will give rise to the retina. So, this is the inner pigmented uh, the outer pigmented layer of the retina and this is the inner uh, sensitive layer of the uh, sensory layer of the retina. So, these two constitute the retina this is the inner sensory layer and this is the outer pigmented layer. The cells of the inner layer they start dividing rapidly and they develop into nerve cells, supporting cells, photoreceptors etc. The photoreceptors are rods and cones, rods are rod like cells which are sensitive to dim light and cones are uh, cone like cells which are sensitive to bright light. So, they all develop from the inner layer of the retina. So, the cells of the inner layer multiply rapidly and develop into nerve cells supporting cells and photoreceptors. So, we will just have a look at them what are the types of cells. So, this is the retina. So, I am having an enlarged view of this portion the retina where you can see the two types of cells the uh, rod cells as well as the cone cells. So, these are the cone cells and these are the rod cells and they are connected to look they are connected to nerve cells you can call them as bipolar cells and they are ganglion cells. So, light comes in this direction and I have taken an enlarged view of this part. So, light comes in this direction light is coming in this direction here this is the direction of light. So, in this retina you have cells like this. So, this is an enlarged view of the retina where you have rods and cones the bipolar cells the ganglion cells etc. and you just closely examine these cells these nerve cells they are having nerve fibers look they are having nerve fibers they all go to the brain. So, how do they go to the brain? So, this is the diagram. So, here will all be these structures all the these cells the rods cones the bipolar cells the uh, cells with nerve fibers. What happens is these nerve fibers they have to go out of the eye they have to get into the brain. So, how do they go out? All these fibers are uh, coming from all directions of the retina they are coming from all parts of the retina and they have to come out of the eye and go to the brain. All of them get out of the retina and they all converge at this point all these nerve fibers will converge at this point this point is called as a blind spot from where they come out and emerge as a nerve called as the optic nerve. So, they are coming out as the optic nerve and it comes out through the choroid fissure. I told you choroid fissure is a fissure that develops on the ventral side of the optic stalk. So, they all come out of the eyeball as the optic nerve and where are they going to? They are going to the diencephalon. So, this is one eye the left eye, this is the right eye, this is the optic nerve from right eye, this is the optic nerve from the left eye. Now, what is happening? Just in front of the infundibulum at the region of the diencephalon they are crossing with each other and this region is called as the optic chiasma and they are entering into the optic lobes of the brain these two are the optic lobes of the brain this is brain part of brain and the nerves coming from the eye are entering into the optic lobes of the brain but before they cross with each other at the region of the diencephalon this crossing is called as the optic chiasma. So, uh, this is what happens so once again the retina consists of uh, cone cells rod cells such uh, bipolar cells the ganglion cells the ganglion cells are having nerve fibers and these nerve fibers they all converge at this point and get out of the eye and this point where they converge is called as the blind spot. Then uh, and finally what happens is the choroid fissure I told you the optic nerve uh, comes out uh, through the optic stalk and it comes out through the choroid fissure. Later the fissure will close. Once the blood vessels are inside the fissure will undergo closing and this becomes a solid stalk. This becomes a closed optic stalk. Now, now 
now next is I told you uh, this is the lens. So, the lens, lens is pinched off from the ectoderm. When the lens is pinched off from the ectoderm, so here you can see the lens is invaginating, it is pinching off from the ectoderm. What happens? The free edges of the ectoderm, so this, this is ectoderm, this is lens placard, this is the lens cup. When this pinches off, these two free edges, these two free edges, they will, uh, they will uh, just fuse they will extend over the lens. Look, these two free edges, they are extending over the lens along with the surrounding mesoderm tissue. So, along with the surrounding, so along with the here, you have the mesoderm tissue, along with the surrounding mesoderm tissue, uh, they extend over the lens and this forms the cornea, this forms the cornea. So, when the lens vesicle is pinched off from the ectoderm, the free edges of the outer ectoderm, they will extend over the lens in conjunction with the head mesenchyme and this forms a double layered cornea which will modify to a thin transparent membrane over the cells. So, this is how the cornea develops. So, here we will just come. This is the lens placard which is invaginating. Mm. So, this is the free edge of the ectoderm, they will fuse together and this region, this is the mesoderm tissue, this is ectoderm tissue, this is mesoderm tissue. So, together with this mesoderm, so here there is mesoderm, together with this mesoderm, look, this is the mesoderm, this is the ectoderm, they together will form a covering over the eye which is called as the cornea. So, that is why it is said the cornea is partly developed from the mesoderm and partly developed from the head ectoderm. This is the head ectoderm and this is the mesenchyme. So, they together form the cornea. That is why it is said that it is partly developed from ectoderm and partly from mesenchyme. Now, now we will go to another diagram. That is, this is the optic cup this is the lens placard and finally, this has developed into the lens, this has developed into the retina, this is the optic cup and it has got an outer pigmented retinal layer and an inner sensory retinal layer, they form the retina. Now, this mesenchyme, this is head mesenchyme, this mesenchyme will now uh, start uh, extending, the mesenchymes, they, uh, this mesenchyme tissue which is seen around the eyeball it forms a coat of connective tissue around. So, it forms a coat of connective tissue around the optic cup uh, outer the pigmented layer of the retina. So, this is the pigmented layer of the retina outer to it this mesenchyme will form a covering or a coat and this coat is called as the choroid coat. What is choroid coat? The second layer this choroid coat. This is the choroid coat which is surrounding the retina and where is this choroid coat formed from? It is formed from the mesenchyme. So, this is the mesenchyme which is covering the optic cup and forms a coat and this coat is called as the choroid coat. Now, the mesenchyme cells around the choroid will form a fibrous protective layer, it is called as the sclera. This is the sclera, outermost layer. This is also formed from the surrounding mesenchyme. So, this mesenchyme here, this is the optic cup, this is the mesenchyme surrounding it, here this shaded region, this shaded region is the dotted shades, this region is the mesenchyme. From this mesenchyme originates a choroid coat as well as the scleroid coat outside. Choroid coat is vascular and protective and scleroid coat is tough and fibrous. Now, we move on to the two chambers of the eyeball. The eyeball has got two chambers. Uh, the larger chamber between the lens and the retina is called as a vitreous chamber which gets filled with an amorphous gel like substance called as vitreous humor. It is actually formed from the retinal cells as well as the lens cells. So, it is secreted by the retinal cells and the lens cells. Uh, so, this gel like substance maintains the shape of the eye. Here you can see a small cavity between the cornea and the lens. This cavity is called as the aqueous chamber. It is filled with a fluid which is called as aqueous humor 
and this aqueous humor is actually produced in the vitreous chamber and it is drained in the aqueous chamber. So, this place is the aqueous chamber, it consists of a fluid called as the aqueous humor which is initially produced in the vitreous chamber, later it gets drained from the aqueous chamber. And uh, the nictitating membrane as I told you it is developing from the eyelids at a later stage. Uh, the two eyelids and nictitating membrane develop the inner lining of the epithelium of the eyelids they give rise to the conjunctiva which is fused with the cornea. So, conjunctiva is formed from the eyelids. So, here will be the upper eyelid and here will be the lower eyelid and from extending between them is the conjunctiva. So, once again we will have a look. So, this is the diencephalon. Uh, Evagination developed on the diencephalon, it is the optic vesicle, optic vesicle uh, it grows towards the head ectoderm and that time the head ectoderm thickens and forms a lens placard, the optic vesicle becomes a cup, this cup is called as the optic cup, it has got a stalk called as the optic stalk, the lens placard is invaginating, it is forming a vesicle, it forms the lens, the optic cup has got two layers, outer pigmented retinal layer, inner sensory retinal layer that gives rise to the retina. The surrounding mesenchyme gives rise to the choroid and the sclera and uh, the ectoderm as well as the mesoderm, head mesenchyme give rise to the cornea. So, this is all regarding the development of the eye in frog. So, you can see one more diagram, this is the optic vesicle which will invaginate to form the optic cup, the optic stalk. You can see the lens placard is invaginating to form the lens. So, this finishes the formation of eye in frog.